16 is the number we're striving for here, as well as an individual character ironclad streak at 13. Can we keep it going? Only one way to find out, and that's to play. Hmm. Oh my. So not often do I advocate for a curse start, but I do think random rare relic is very good on ironclad. Fighting Hexaghost later on. Lots of rare relics can be game winners right off the get-go. I mean, we can get um, Old Coin, Dead Branch, Pocket Watch, Fossilized Helix, Incense Burner, Mango, Duvu Doll. Just to name a few. I also tend to feel like starting with a rare relic, it puts you one relic deeper into the rare pool for your character, which can be really nice. That said, the curse start is a, a, hmm, a little questionable. Could take the boss swap in this position. Eh, it's a little iffy. Yeah, alternately we could get an unceasing top or a shovel or something similar. I'm gonna do it. Got a champion belt. Whenever you apply vulnerable, apply one weak and a shame. Champion belt with the bash is pretty good, actually. I'm thinking we start something along this line. Try to do this. Although three elites with no rest is tricky. Yeah, definitely not bad. This is a champ exclusive rare relic. Or sorry, an ironclad exclusive rare relic. Budget uppercut makes a real uppercut strong. Let's just pick up a uh, thunderclap too. It's not the game changer I was hoping for, but like I said, it might push us closer to finding an actual game changing relic. Uh, do we ever go to here, here, or here? I could actually see going to this shop, although that means having a shame for quite a while. Shame is not so bad for Clad. The three easy pull fights. We have a bit more money going into that first shop. We get one less elite. Eh. I think we're mostly fine going this way. 56 HP cultist is a little annoying, but I think we'll be just fine with a three strike draw in turn one. Turn I bash strike or bash defend. Uh, two strikes to kill next turn, which we're guaranteed, so we can play the defend. Right. We draw five out of these cards, we always get at least two strikes, which will do 18 damage. Okay, not too bad for the one fight with the curse. Get an ancient potion and either an anger or a power through. I'm always happy with first card anger. A self-duplicating zero-cost attack really helps out Ironclad early on. I think Power Through can be a, a really powerful card, but it needs some combo, an Evolve or a Second Wind to make it bearable. Otherwise, the, the wounds that you add to your own deck will overwhelm you. That already makes me feel fairly confident against that first Elite. Let's just get this curse removed. Strike, feel no pain, some juicy stuff here. Oh. Do I buy a wild strike? I really doubt it. Okay, two defends and one strike. Got our combat in the first event room, which makes me really glad I didn't go any other path than the one we're on with this start, anyway. Gain some health from Jawworm. Get 10 bucks and a Warcry, Second Wind, or Twin Strike. Second Wind is here. 
Second Wind I like for Hexaghost, especially. Really good card for later on. Helps us delete stuff so that we can draw the Anger more often. I think Twin Strike is perfectly cromulent here. But I really do appreciate an early Second Wind, especially with uh, Hexaghost coming up. I think we need the Twin Strike, though. So that we can do targeted damage. Uh, and gives us a good reason to pick up Strength, too. Hopefully draw a Bash, at least. Yeah. Uh, might have been able to kill that one. Doesn't matter. Big 7 heals 6. Only minus 1. Okay, good potion, good potion. And a Perfected Strike. Perfected Strike's not a card you want too many copies of, however, this is a pretty good one. We currently have five strikes plus the Twin Strike. So Perfected Strike is gonna do six plus 14, 20 damage for two energy, exactly as powerful as a Carnage. Carnage that doesn't exhaust if I draw it at the same time as Bash, no less. Dropkick is here to go with uh, wanting things that go with Champ Belt. I think we pick up one Perfected Strike. Now, this is not necessarily committing to Perfected Strike at large. It's taking a Perfected Strike right now so that we can chop things in half, get better relics, and pick up different cards for later. It might also be an important upgrade early. Hey. Hmm, could use the Ancient Potion here. Though it doesn't help me on this turn. We just go Bash and Defend. Bash the one with more health. Take five. That worked out. And that's 16, so we kill. Good. Back to 72. We've done really well in these early fights so far. And there's the strength we wanted. Spot weakness, perfect. If the enemy is attacking us, we'll gain three points of strength. Makes the twin strike hit way harder, makes the angers hit way harder. I like it a lot. I think I'm gonna upgrade perfected strike over bash as our first upgrade. Make this card hit a lot harder. Could also upgrade Twin Strike, Anger, or maybe even the Spawn Weakness, although upgrading the card that's not always going to work is a little bit iffy to me. ODBM says, how much does Champion Belt affect whether I pick up Thunderclap? Not that much, actually, but a little bit. Spot Weakness is going to be drawn on the non-attack turns of Hexaghost. It's happened before. happened before. Could I actually go for the Burning Elite here. I think that's not insane. Hmm. It's a little insane. Uh, we're not that good against Lagavulin if our draw order is really bad, if we miss the spot weakness and the bash. If we land everything in the right order, it'll be fine. But if we don't, it won't. Also, upgrade before the Elite versus upgrade after the Elite is a huge difference go this way. Might upgrade Bash next? We'll see. Ah, uh, the classic problem. I guess we'll play Bash over Perfected Strike, although the Perfected Strike does way more damage. The Bash makes him weak. Well, it's doing more damage next turn. Although, let's see. If I do 27 plus 6, 33, we bring him to 15. Pretty easy to do 15 next turn. If I bash in anger, we do 17, bring him to 31 with Vuln. Three strikes would not kill. So no, I think it's perfected strike, anger defend. Right. Although actually with Vuln, this might have been enough. It's been 24 plus 13. Okay. Get a power potion over the... Ancient Potion, and another zero-cost attack if we want one. We could go double anger here. Don't often advocate for double anger, but this is a deck where it's okay, maybe. 
Although with five strikes still in the deck, I don't know. J Blue J says, does anger get put at the bottom of the deck or random? Goes into your discard pile, which is then randomly reshuffled when you uh, cycle through the full deck. And yeah, I would appreciate if the, the chat focused on the, the current channel, the current run. I know there's a, a lot of desire to talk about other streamers of Spire, their streak, their respective skill. But right here and now, we're focused on this Ironclad run. I don't know if I want another Anger. It's really nice for this elite fight, though. Like, really nice for this elite fight. And the next two elite fights? Alright. We gotta stop taking attacks very shortly, though. Probably that's the last one. Because we're gonna be behind on removals. I'm hoping for a Pandora's box. First up, the Egg Boy. It's a good fight for the Power Potion. Demon form, barricade, corruption, you name it. Let's do it. Dark embrace, inflame, or brutality. Ooh, I like brutality a lot. One more card draw per turn. We lose some health, but not that much health. Inflame is damage, which means I cannot play bash without waking up the nerd. Let's go brutality here. Dang it. <laughs> Classic. So we do miss the spot weakness and the perfected strike with the bash. Classic. It's okay. We'll do our bass, but we're losing about 30 health now. There's no way around it. This landed. Should be able to kill before we get hit again. Heck. Ancient tea set will give us energy after visiting a rest site. Uppercut feels pretty good as it gets plus one turn of weakness in addition to the Voln. So let's grab an uppercut here. Still a pretty good upgrade, too. That's probably the last attack we add. Warpaint will upgrade two random skills. I think we need help right now. Uh, even if this is two defend upgrades, I mean, the only other skill is spawn weakness, but even if it's just two defend upgrades, I think it'll still be very good overall. Unless we get a Pandora's box later. But who knows if that'll happen. Looks like spot weakness, defend, defend. We'll try to kill either the front or back one with a fire potion next turn. Cool with that. I wish I could play uppercut or bash here. I guess I could uppercut the middle one, make it weak, but eh. Probably better to block here. Alright, that should be enough. We do... 16... 25, 45. Get rid of that one. Block. Either going to take only two, or I'm going to kill the middle one next turn. I think we take two and hit the front one. Actually, we can just kill it. Even better. Take two more. Oh, goodness. Okay, still plenty of health. We get an Nchaku. Energy for every 10 attacks play. That makes the deck feel a little bit better, at least. Body Slam, Iron Wave, Sword, Boomerang. I'm really glad this isn't an act where I'm fighting Guardian at the end. Um, this would be pretty tough, getting through Guardian. 
You could maybe make an argument for Iron Wave or Sword Boomerang. I don't particularly like either at the moment. Too many unupgraded cards already. Adding more is just going to make this deck less consistent. So I really don't think we want any more attack cards. Even the Sword Boomerang with spot weakness for now. Deck is currently draw hungry. We'd like to see Pommel Strikes, Battle Trances, Shrug It Off, True Grit, anything like that. We'd also like to see potions. Hello, potions. Uh oh. Hello, gremlins. Actually, not the scariest arrangement of gremlins, though. Two fats, one angry, one shield. Only need to take two damage on this turn. Kill a fat gremlin. Next turn with weakness, we're, and frail, we're a little bit more struggling, but overall this should be an easy fight for us. Unless. Let's see, so 4-4-4-3-3. Four, 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 three, three. Gotta take 10 here, ouch. If only the angry gremlin had been shielded. So yeah, we'll kill the shield one. And then take four more. And kill with perfected strike. Still no potion, but we do get an inflame for more strength, which I'll take. Armaments or power through are both also somewhat acceptable, but we just need more damage for Hexaghost and for the next elite fought fight. Karoku, if I made a dad joke based on this card reward right here, would it be funny or would it be too inflame to laugh at? No refunds. Spot weakness turn one. Undesirable. We even waste the nunchaku this way. That's okay. That enemy does not intend to attack. But we can keep the weakness and vulnerable up. This will be weak next turn, too. Oh, and I can do some math. So, let's assume I draw a perfected strike. What's the actual damage of that? We have no strength. And seven attacks. So it's six plus 21. 27 goes to 40. So Perfected Strike, Twin Strike would kill. Or Perfected Strike, Strike, Anger. Or Perfected Strike, Inflame, Anger. What about Inflame, Twin Strike, Anger, Strike? That would be 12, 12, 20. That would only be 44, so I would need the strike for that. The question I'm asking here is, do I get to play this defend for 8 health or not? I think the answer is we don't do that. Take 6. Stay actually below the threshold of 36 anyway. Kill the knob. Get a boat thingy. Okay, here's a good relic. 10 block on turn 1. A Sneko Oil to draw five and randomize the cost of cards in my hand, and a Pummel Strike or a True Grit. Both pretty nice. For we want to lean all offense, Pummel Strike is amazing here. Card draw that works with strength, makes the Perfected Strike stronger, and helps us draw the Angers. That's a very good card. I can only take one of them, is the thing. Early Act 2, I really like the attack-heavy style. It's, it's not until we get to the Act 2 boss that I want really a lot of block cards. Did we pick both angers? We did. Take the Pommel Strike, uh, partially because of Nunjaku, and we'll go two upgrades here. We'll go two upgrades. I'm going to upgrade in Flame and Uppercut, probably. Oh, 
Oh, purple fire spirits. Here we can give up a card, and we're way behind on removals, so this is a great time. Give up a uncommon card, get full health, give up a rare card, something with a gold border, would gain 10 max health. Currently we have no rares. Or we can give up a starter card and lose not much at all, and I'm, I'm pretty happy losing one of our strikes here. I'm not going to remove Bash, not with the champ belt, no way. No, I think with the champ belt, we still keep that bash around. Even though we have a perfected strike, we have plenty of strike cards. I could remove a defend, but that seems suicidal. Let's lose a strike. Let's get one more turn of both weak and vuln here. So it's two vulnerable and three weak with uppercut. All right, Hexa nerd. Bird. Time for you to feel the word of my anger. Since Hexaghost is going to flood the deck with burns, we're going to counter that flooding by just getting really, really mad. This is an excellent series of turns so far. 49 damage. Her blam. Look at that, we barely take anything in return. Next turn could hurt a little bit though, six times two. Although if we, yeah, bash, anger, defend plus, these defend pluses have been really nice. Easy peasy. 12, 18, 18, 18, 18. And the fight's already over. GG, nerd. We got an excellent potion here, a Heart of Iron. A Feed, Bludgeon, or Demon form. Well, I gotta tell you, this sure looks like a Feed sort of deck. If we can kill enemies with this, we will permanently raise our max health. Second says, do I prefer donations or gifted subs? Both are really appreciated. I think personally I prefer gifted subs, especially right at this time, as it'll help us push towards a new emote slot for the channel. I'm taking a feed. Feed at the beginning of Act 2 is, is just a ton of max health. Even if you only land it in half of all the opportunities, you'll gain easily 30, 40 max health just doing occasional feeding. Deliberate, dedicated feeding? More than that. Second, thank you so much for very generous 20 gifted subs. Welcome, everybody, to the Cozy Sub Club. Holy moly. Talk about our generosity bomb. Get in here, everyone. Let's feed on... Hmm, Sneko-clad with two angers, though. But I have Uppercut, Perfected Strike, Bash, and Feed. So that's pretty good Sneko-eye. You could never convince me to take Black Star here. Never in a million years would I take Black Star at this card at this reward. I would take either Fusion Hammer or Sneko Eye. So problem with the Sneko Eye is I'll have to remove the angers. That's a little uncomfortable. But the perfected strike will stay strong. The uppercut and bash will do huge work. The ancient T set will help a lot too. Or my chicken? No, I'm turkey. And then Chad is now offering to bribe me to take the Black Star. What is going on? <laughs> Y'all are insane. Y'all are insane. I really like Sneko Eye with Ironclad. It definitely can backfire sometimes. But I think it's a lot safer with Boat Thingy, with Nunchaku, with a few good attacks. Once Ironclad has Snekawa, you get to flood the deck with big, expensive cards, which is really, really nice. Problem with Blackstar here is that Blackstar would require me to face the foes of Act 2 with just three base energy per turn, which I think this deck would struggle with a little bit.
Yeah, I'm going to take a Snickolai. I think Fusion Hammer could be quite good as well. Losing out on upgrades is a little uncomfortable, but Ironclad really doesn't mind resting all that much. And the extra energy per turn is certainly invaluable in a deck like this, but I think the extra draw per turn of the Snekowai is going to be a lot better. At least that's my hope. Alright, elites aren't too prevalent here. A couple paths I could see going. A lot of events, though. Combats for card rewards are pretty good. I guess these are all card reward combats. So that would be four fires and two elites. That's not too bad. Important upgrades include... Spot weakness. Actually don't have that many good uses for upgrades. Other option that looks reasonable this way. And then we can choose what to do from there. Could even go to another shop. Still four rest sites? One... no, three rest sites that way. I think in either case we're going to go to this shop. That way we're not forced into an early elite. There is an elite along every path here, so we have to fight an elite fairly early. Um, actually, this one on the far left is the easiest because of the ancient tea set, giving me bonus energy turn one here. Here, here, not there though. So yeah, bon two bonus energy on turn one with Snekowai is a big deal. So, Snekowai is not always kind. This could actually be a situation for the Sneko Oil. Well, I don't need to. It's a very, very good potion with Sneko Eye. That's the other good reason to take the Sneko Eye, by the way, was that we had a Sneko Oil potion. Just counter the randomness with more randomness. I'm going to mulligan this turn. Well, not mulligan. I'm going to pass this turn, and we'll think about using it next turn, depending on the draws here. This looks pretty reasonable. We get to Uppercut, Perfected Strike, Pommel Strike, Defend Plus, take three, and Twin Strike. This is fine. Draw first, as always. Leaving it with 30 health. Health is pretty doable. Beautiful. Um, uppercut, anger, strike, feed. Yes. Oh, that made you vulnerable. Uppercut, anger, feed. And then we're with Nunchaku on nine even. Brilliant. So we're up three max health. We're offered another uppercut with Snekowai and Champion Belt. We definitely want another copy of this card. We don't even need to upgrade this one. We just want to have it. It's definitely better than the clothesline. This is two weak and one vuln, 13 damage. This is two weak, 12 damage. So it's one more damage and one vuln. Just a strictly better card, so to speak. Ah. Paper Frog would make enemies take additional damage when vulnerable. That's pretty tempting. With the... Who's our act boss? Champ? Champ. I'm not afraid of Champ. Although we'll need better block for Champ. So Paper Frog is tempting. I also really like the Clockwork Souvenir. Giving us one artifact to start each combat. Block the first debuff inflicted upon us. Now that won't block Confusion from Snekowai, but it will block enemy debuffs. Like Hex from Chosen, like Vulnerable from the Heart, um, etc, etc. Lamguin says, why did the Ironclad start a fast fashion business? He wanted to get his own clothes line. Panic Button's also very, very good here alongside the souvenir. For 30 block, even if it's random cost, 30 block is pretty good. And I would like to remove an anger. Have we picked a single block card? No, but we've only seen one, really. I mean, we saw a couple power throughs. Those are pretty good. 
but I didn't take them. Man, as much as I like, like I like panic button, I'm gonna go with souvenir uh, anger removal here. Although paper frog is pretty tempting, like half again vulnerable. It's bird time. The reburdening. Ba 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 birds. Four hits to knock a bird out of the air. So I can do that with Twin Strike, Anger Strike, and Full Block with Defend. Also, I get an extra energy. So I can do Bash, Twin Strike, Anger, Defend. Yes. Hit the one with the least health. Yes. Is Bomb good? It certainly can be. I think it'd be a lot better if you're fighting the Collector as our act boss. I wouldn't call it particularly good here. All right, I can play defend and one other card. You're gonna stay alive so I can eat you. Let's go defend uppercut. Take one. Or I could uppercut the bird that's attacking me. Take zero. Problem is next turn, this one will be a problem. I'll take one here. All right, we have to whiff this feed. That's okay. We'll be back. Let's not take anything. Well, we're lucky we didn't get attacked this turn. Otherwise, I would have had to either tank some or not feed, but it worked out. We get the best of both worlds. Delicious. The HP goes up. Could take a clothesline in addition to the double uppercut. That just seems like overkill, though. No need for Iron Wave or War Cry. Skip that. Two more events. I am going to go the far left here. I think we're we're in good shape for that. And I, I really want the bonus two energy on the first turn with Ancient T-Set of our first elite fight, which we don't get going this way. Relic for a Writhe Curse. Writhe Curse that I can't remove for a while. Now, relics could be nice, but I don't think this is the situation. No, especially if I'm going to get bonus energy on turn one. I don't want to use up one of my turn one draws with a curse. So, no. But I'm really happy to see these nerds. The the Red Mask Gang is a fight that's going to drop bonus money and give us the Red Mask Relic, which will weaken enemies on turn one, helping us with our defense plan, help remove artifact layers from foes, and could turn into a bunch of money later in the run. So I like it. But I don't like this draw. 13 plus 15 won't kill anyone. Hmm. This is a pretty dangerous fight. Uh, we don't actually lose dexterity. That's nice. But we draw all our block on turn one. So I'm considering... We could Sneko Oil here. I'd really like to use that in the elite fight against slavers, not against these three. As an emergency for next turn. I think what I'm arriving at here is that we don't use the feed this fight. We play uppercut feed on, let's say, Romeo. We want to kill Romeo first. This Romeo will make us weak next turn, which we cannot abide. We need to kill Bear by turn three. So Romeo first, then Bear, then Pointy. Take two this turn. I'm sorry, feed. It's not meant to be.
All right, can I get two kills here? Bash, Pommel Strike kills one. Uppercut, Perfected Strike kills another. Leave Pointy alive. Actually, Bash Perfected Strike kills Bear. Uppercut kills Romeo, and then I can Pummel Strike, Pointy. Guess we'll Pummel Strike first. Take 12, win the fight. I'm pretty happy with that. Bonus points if we can win the fight with only one more attack played. So let's try to do that. Perfected Strike will kill. Nice. We get the red mask, an attack potion, and so many clotheslines. You end up skipping a lot of cards with Snekawai. I'm not uh, not feeling bad about where we're at currently. Not feeling bad at all. So let's see, upgrade wise. I'll probably upgrade either the feed or the spot weakness. I think we're in a strong enough position I can upgrade this feed. And I think it's actually a good idea. Okay, so we'll upgrade the feed first of all things. My question is, do we take the attack potion or do we keep the current two potions, which I think are quite fantastic. I think the Sneko Oil is probably better than an attack potion on average. And the block potion could be essential for champ or for book of stabbing, depending on who we're fighting. Headbutt can be nice to get card like spot weakness back or a, another key card. I'm not thrilled with it here. I think we're just going to keep skipping cards. All right, we'll upgrade feed. And head into the first elite fight of the act. With bonus energy on turn one, it is the three slavers. And we did draw feed plus on turn one. So that's pretty good. This looks like a really good opening draw. I should be able to kill the red slaver here and full block. And you can't do much better than that. Oh, kind Sneko, thank you for your helpful ways. Tis much appreciated by me, the Ironclad. Kill the middle guy next. We're immune to the first weak in apl application. Now nah, we'll kill the front guy next. He's got less health. Yeah. Perfected Strike, Strike, Defend. Perfect. Less health actually quite mattered there. Close but no cigar. Gotta take six here. Probably should have actually delayed so we can set up Nunchaku better. That's fine. Get a shovel, letting us dig for relics at rest sites rather than upgrading, which is actually pretty good. Because we have an abundance of rest sites and honestly not that many good upgrades. Heavy Blade with Snekoi and Strength Gain. Actually, this card kind of slaps. True Grit's pretty good as well. Take this heavy blade. Keep the current potions as well. Although I do like a regen potion. Let's uh, let's dig now. The earlier you get relics, the better. So I've got a couple relic uh, upgrades I can defer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you dig up a toxic egg, the earlier the better. So now any skill we get is going to be upgraded, and we'll have plus one dexterity, so that our block cards block for one more. Let's keep taking stuff that helps me right now. You skipping Dead Branch in Act 3. Aha! I found the use case for the Sneko Oil. Actually, we're only taking zero here. I don't need to use it, but... And I have five energy. Never mind. I found nothing. Yeah, where are my flame barriers at? Come on. I take zero. Never mind. Forget the potion. Just get strong. 
kill you. Don't even become vulnerable. Don't even become vulnerable. Ouch. Here we could consider using something. Will Artifact block Sneko Oil? No, because Sneko Oil does not apply a debuff directly to the player. It directly randomizes the cards in your hand, rather than applying a confusion effect. Two more fights. What's our potion chance? 40%. Take two more. Bring you to one, bring you to one. And then I play Strike and then Feed. Strike to do exactly zero damage. Get the Nunchaku just a little bit higher here. Do you find a potion? We also find an Armaments Plus, letting us upgrade every card in hand, which I think is excellent alongside A, large draws, B, the smooth stone, and C, uh, digging up stuff with a shovel instead of upgrading cards. I'll take that. Keep the current potions. And let's dig one more time. This time we get a potion belt. Now we can hold more potions at once. That's really good news. The relics are starting to add up, Twitch chat. I like our odds from here quite a lot. You will be weak forever. I do decree it. Five vulnerable, seven weaken. Enjoy, nerd. Enjoy so I can't be frailed. Cool. Cool. So I could kill here, or we can try to go for the max health gain, which is a little expensive here. Taking 12. 12 is going to be worth it for four max health, definitely. Don't question me. Guaranteed to draw next turn. Good. Immolate. Deal big damage to all enemies. Put a burn into the discard pile. It's also seeing red, although random cost seeing red is not necessarily good. I sure like an immolate here. The burns are a little annoying, but the massive area damage is very helpful. And what a great turn one. We get to do huge damage with uppercut, perfected strike, 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 twin strike. No need for any potions here. Nice damage, all the way down to 70. Seems relatively unlikely we're gonna land the feed here, so I'm wondering if we just play it for extra damage right now, because it'll take at least two full turns to draw all the way through. We don't have the block to prolong this fight against the Book of Stabbing, and I would like to have a healthy amount of hit points for the champ fight, so I think I'm just gonna sacrifice the bite here, the, the feed, and we go for the kill as quickly as possible. Should be the same damage either way here. 
get a question card. More options from each card award. There, my friends, is Flame Barrier. Two cost, block for 17. And hit back every time we're struck. Excellent card with Sneko Eye. All right, one more combat prior to champ. I'm gonna take a quick break before champ, so that I don't bungle things too badly. Thirteen plus nine plus eighteen. Forty. Forty. Oh, come on. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Don't be like that. not going to use the oil. Now that we have extra potion slots, there's a lot less incentive to to do that. I think we get to just block with flame barrier here. Yeah. And we'll cycle back around. This will bring it down to one, so I can't play any attacks here. Was super worthwhile. Four cards that I don't want. Like we could take Carnage, but it's it's not good enough. Prior to Champ, I'm thinking we might upgrade Heavy Blade. Although, quite frankly, the Armaments has a good potential to do that for us. So maybe I'll just dig one more time before Champ. Eighty health with this deck ought to be enough to beat Champ. Okay, I think we'll dig one more time. We get an ornamental fan, giving us block for playing three attacks in one turn. Let's fight the Champ. So, the Champ fight shouldn't be too hard. All we need to do is land spot weakness a couple times, and we've already succeeded in doing so one time. That's my belt! Let's pommel strike first, just in case armaments is the top card. So that we can upgrade the spot weakness. It's not. We also want to gradually chip away at champ's health here. That's my belt. It's a really good hand to upgrade. We get the bash upgraded, the defend upgraded, the heavy blade upgraded. We take a little damage, that's okay. Now is when we want to think about if we're going to use the Heart of Iron during this fight. I think we have enough health that I don't need to, but Champ is going to be able to chip away at our hit points very consistently, which makes me worry that we might need it here. I'm going to block for 6 and make him weak, so he's going to attack for 11. We'd full block with the, essence, with the uh, Heart of Iron. I'm gonna use this. Hopefully we don't end up needing that later. I'm not gonna put any burns or angers into this deck. Don't like her. Hit me so I can spot your weakness again, sir. Close enough. OK, 
Okay, so when champ drops below 220 health is when we get a change in behavior. So 222 is fine. Good. We landed with an upgrade, the second spot weakness. 10 strength should be plenty here. So if we attack Champ now, and we try to rush him down, or we can do better on a future turn, we'll be vulnerable for the execute if we bring him below half now. I don't think I want to bring him below half. So I don't believe I play any of these cards this turn. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I'm probably going to miss feed in this fight, and I'm okay with that. We just need to beat Champ to death. Definitely feels like we could have kept the Heart of Iron. That's okay. So, could kill him now with Heavy Blade if I want a chance of... Beating. I'll wait one more turn. Let's do it. You've done it now. 33 by 2. Pretty hard to justify trying to block and feeding. I think we just kill him now. I'll take it. Oh my. Well, welly, well, well. So I was thinking in my head on my break, what my top rare cards um, from the champ would be. With question card, I figured we'd be able to get one of the good ones. And my breakdown was as follows. Number one, the very top, corruption. It's the one we want most, making all of our skills free, regardless of what this stinky Sneko Eye says. Number two might have been Barricade, letting us retain block from turns to turns. Both of these skills, both of these three cost powers, exceedingly good when we're getting lots of upgraded skills added to the deck. Number three was probably Impervious Plus with Toxic Egg. Number four, Demon Form. Number five, Fiendfire. Actually, no, number three, Reaper, then Demon Form, then Fiendfire. Forgot about Reaper. But Corruption's the best one, I think, by far. We play Corruption and all the skills are free. And we're going to add a lot of skills to that because we have Toxic Egg and Question Card. So we can find many, many, many of these to use. That said, Barricade's got some definite utility to it, but I like Corruption first, then Barricade, generally speaking. And I was wondering if we would see Cursed Key. I was definitely hoping for more energy. With Corruption, I probably don't want to take the Velvet Choker, limiting us to six cards per turn. Actually pretty doable with this deck. Um, but I imagine we're better off just getting one stinky curse and then removing it at the last chest. One more energy per turn will help a lot, especially with Sneko Eye. So I think four energy Sneko is by far the best thing we could do. We have yet to see Prayer Wheel in any way, shape, or form. Sure wish we could dig up a key, right? So we have to get the green key. That's a bit of a problem here. Green key plus curse key can be an issue. Yeah, so we're stuck with that curse. That's a bit annoying. That's a lot annoying, actually. Being stuck with a curse is trouble. Trouble, I tell you. I think we do the following. Hunting Fox, hunting for 90, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. See, there's shops here on the left side to get rid of the curse after the chest, but problem is if I go to either of these shops, we can't go to the Burning Elite. So we have to just take the curse and be okay with that. Or get a random chest in one of these two event rooms. That's the other option.
I like this far left path, but again, we have to go for the Burning Elite, so... No choices. Double. Spiker. The re-spikening. When you're so spiky, you'll wish you hadn't been so spiky. Should be an easy fight with Corruption, though. Like, a really easy fight. Corruption, then Arma, then Spot? Or Arma, then Spot, then Corruption? Arma, then Spot, then Corruption. Oh, I can't play Corruption now. That's fine, too. Might be regretting my choices momentarily. Here we go. 49 damage. Easy. Twenty plus twenty-eight. That yeah, should be enough. It's a lot of self damage taken, but I'm okay with it. I could just kill in one hit with heavy blade, but I want to feed here. And we could. Uh, it doesn't even end the fight. Okay, no. Defend uppercut, take six, or try again. Let's try again. Better. Another armor plus, a sword boomerang plus. Hmm. Nah. Transform a card can turn our other anger into something else. The strikes are still boosting the perfected strike, so I think anger really is the worst card in the deck. Thunderclap's not terrible with the uh, champion belt, I suppose. With Corruption, we're much more hoping for a Shockwave, though. Shockwave Plus would be uh, just so much better. Goodbye, anger. Turn in two. Also better to transform uh, Anger than to transform Strike, because Strike could transform into Anger. Anger has to turn into a different card, and it can't turn into a Strike. Get a Sword Boomerang. That's better than an Anger. Definitely better than an Anger. We also get a Combat, which I am okay with. Delicious. True Grit Plus. Yes, please. Nine block and exhaust a card in our hand of our choosing. We could find a Feel No Pain or a Dark Embrace. We're really going to be in the money now. It's true. Boomerang's just a worse heavy blade for this deck, but that's still better than a strike. Definitely still better than a strike. Double, uh, four days per turn is going to be an issue, if we're not careful.
back to almost full HP here, another True Grit Plus or a Sentinel Plus. If this card is exhausted, such as by being played when Corruption's down, then we will gain three energy. Let's take this one. All right, we have to go here. Relic, Relic, Relic. Blue Key, Sadness. Sentinel does have a 100% win rate, it's true. But what about an Offering Plus? With Corruption and Sneko Eye? Yes. Yes to Offering Plus. Last question is, do I save my money or try to get two removals? Remove one strike here and now. Definitely buying this. And one later, or save all of my money so that I can afford it maybe a rare relic in the final shop. Like, oh, I don't know, a dead branch. Ah. I can also buy potions, which are pretty good. I'm never going to buy Sadistic Nature here. Not even with the Champion Belt. It's it's not as much damage as you think, I assure you. We're certainly in a position where I think we can save stuff, right? Like, we're, we're dominating things right now. I've got 108 hit points. But I take a Barricade? Yes. So when is Sadistic Nature good? I think it's best on Silent. Silent with Venom or Crippling Cloud or Bouncing Flask or Noxious Fumes. But it's pretty bad on every other character. Can do fun things with Wave of the Hand, but it, it's not even that good with Wave of the Hand, oddly enough. Lots of combats coming up. Many chances to get potions. Do like a strike remove a lot. I guess the question is, how much money are we getting on average? 30, 30, 15, 15, so 90, 120. So if I want to be able to afford a rare relic in the final shop, I can't spend anything now. Okay, let's do that. I gotta get all three keys? Jesus. One, uh, two, three. Okay. Just don't misclick on the map. Leave. Proceed. Here. Where's the boot when you need it? It's not here. Could consider the oil here. We've got plenty of health at the moment, though. Three attacks, a bit of blocks. So we block for 10, take 23. Next turn, we should be mostly fine. I don't like it. Definitely don't want to play this right now. Looks like a kill with feed though, so all is well. 31. Get Akabeko for more damage on turn one. Ooh, spot weakness plus or second wind. Second spot weakness seems pretty dang good to further the strength gain, especially with the corruption. Second wind to get rid of non attack cards of any variety. Could be good, but with corruption, less important. Take the weakness. Both are good, though. Bag of marbles for vulnerable turn one should help out a bit. Then corruption. Sentinel. Get 
Giant Head's very much going to be a damage race, so the faster we can be done with this, the better. Dang it, Spell Weakness. Okay, I can do Bash, Strike, Uppercut. Keep the Offering. So we get all these next turn. That's most of a full block. I'd like to believe we can land the feed. believe anymore. Torionathopter, healing is 5 per potion. That's a lot more effective health in the late game here. Exhum, very, very good with corruption. Getting any exhausted card back into our hand. There's also Uppercut and Battle Trance Plus. But I'm thinking Exhum. Exhum upgraded, no less. Oh, you know, maybe I should have taken that second win because of the curse coming up. We do at least have True Grit, but uh, we have to open this chest, gaining a doubt, not a normality, and the Sapphire Key. Okay, it's not normality, we're going to be fine. Although we do want to remove that curse because it will eat our artifact, if nothing else. I must make sure we click on this enemy. Don't even acknowledge the Sever Soul, it's true. Not when there's a... Not when there's something that good waiting for me. Tempting to spot weakness here, but looks like I'm going to Flame Barrier Strike. Pretty hard to land feed in this fight for us. We just don't quite have the blocking game up yet. And we're going to get attacked for a lot. Shoot. I knew I should have played that True Grit. Uh, is this the time, then, for the Sneka Whale, finally? It looks like it might be. Yeah, I think it is. And it's too expensive. That looks a bit better. Looks quite a lot better, actually. Beautiful. Go defend. Uppercut. Peace strike this guy to death. Play the inflame. Life is good. Like I said, I'd, I'd like to land the feed, but it's not necessarily required. I can exhum- oh, exhum for the feed, too. I didn't even think about that interaction. Can't feed multiple times in this fight. But there are other fights where I will be able to. I can exhum the Sentinel as well. If I need more... Chonking. Flex Potion's quite good. Shrug it off plus quite good as well. Not interested in Flex Plus, although it's got some utility. We need more block cards. Need to keep going the green path. Gonna recall here so we can upgrade a card or dig at the very final fire. Get to block the vulnerable from this nerd. Or not the vulnerable, the constrict from this nerd. So no problem there. Should be an easy feed fight. Easy peasy, lemon feedy. Too much damage. Uh, 
And that'd be another card that helps a lot. Dark Embrace says, whenever a card is exhausted, draw one. Got plenty of exhaust thanks to the corruption. No barricade, but uh, we're most of the way there to a complete and functioning late-game Ironclad deck. Yeah, I've also now got Speed... Ancient Potion Speed Potion to use against Heart, which can really help with the block game. Some really, really good potions in the Potion Belt. And we have enough money for the Act 4 shop to be pretty spectacular. We also get to look at three colorless cards with a question card. Very happy to sacrifice 10 health here to look at Dark Shackles Plus. Dark Shackles Plus again. And Panic Button Plus. Yeah. Bruh. Now that's late game block for you. Yeah, that feels like it's going to save me more than 10 health overall, especially with the Dark Embrace. Corruption in the deck, right? Sorry, Time Eater. So sorry. But don't forget, we got to get the green key still, and that means beating the Reptomancer. Problem for Reptomancer, I've drawn Corruption on turn one. So sorry, Reptomancer. I'm not sorry at all, actually. Hmm. Can't play my attacks, though. Most of them. Let's kill one of these daggers. Two of these daggers. Could exhume offering played again. Should have done that and played the emulate. We're okay now. Is there a bar barricade in this deck? Not yet. But I'd like there to be one. You know? Oof. Twenty times two? How about five times two? Lady. More strength. Entropic Brew, Toy Ornithopter Plus. Yes. Yes, that's four additional potions, 20 additional health of healing with 125 max health. We're in very, very good position here, Twitch chat. I'm going to discard the skill potion and go with these four. We're going to try not to use any potions through the Act 2 bosses. I really don't see that being a problem for us. Inlimity asks, is Warcry Plus a consideration? It's free with corruption. Let's us put a card back. Let's us reroll the cost of a card, which can be nice. Might be too many cards, though. I'm gonna go with no. It is. It is worth thinking about, but I think no ultimately. All right. So I either upgrade one card or we dig. I think we dig for good luck, Twitch chat. I could also rest for some health. I might do that in Act 4. Kunai! If we play three attacks in one turn, we gain Dexterity. Cool. Dark Embrace and Corruption turn one against the Nerd Bird. Hmm.
Oh, when we got the Bag of Marbles, I failed to realize that was also a turn of Weaken with Champ Bell. Did you realize that we all of our enemies start with two turns of Weaken? Because we have Red Mask for one week, Bag of Marbles for one Vulnerable, and then Champion Belt gives one week. That's pretty cool. So the Heart is going to start with two turns of Weakness. Exciting. Exciting news. I think we get to play Corruption turn one. Ideally, we want to exhume Feed in this fight. I think we'll be fine. So we go defend and then more energy of stuff, yeah. The boss gets kind of strong. That's a bit spooky. I'm not gonna play these yet. Probably should have let Art of War happen though. It's not gonna be an ethical fight this fight. No, no. Oh no. Nothing ethical about what's about to happen. Don't play that Sentinel. Do get Dex though. So we have a limited number of skills, though. We're going to run out of cards kind of quickly here. Which means we have to be at least a little careful about how we do this. I'm going to panic button here. Expect to kill next turn. Maybe Dark Shackles, but probably not. No, okay. Can we make it a Kunai then? Yes. So close. So uh, talk about well-rationed block. We're now out of block at this point of the fight. Beautiful. Bonk. All right, 133 health moving onwards. Glad we got that at least one exhumed feed. We still have one boss to beat. Shouldn't be too hard with all these potions and health. It is the Slug Time Eater Person Man. Yeah. Uh, and again, we have Corruption Dark Embrace Turn 1, which I'm very happy with. More like the Sus Eater. So this fight we should be able to, again, win just using all of the block cards in it one time. Delete this. This will block vulnerable otherwise. Yeah, delete this. Bruh. Mm. 
I want kunai, I have to play the feed. We're good. I think Exhum has to go on to a spot weakness here. have your health back, Time Eater. But know that I'll take it from you again. Delicious. All right, we're on to Act 4 in what I would describe as an extremely commanding position. With tons and tons and tons of max health, tons and tons of banked resource. We're even rich, too. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these ironclad victories? Have I been here before? Time Eskar, go home, Time Eater. You got nothing. So we're missing five health. That doesn't feel like it's worth uh, digging about when we have the Toyonathopter anyway. So I'm just going to dig, uh, resting rather. So I'm just going to dig one more time pick up the White Bee Statue, guaranteeing we get a uh, potion drop from the Spire Spear and Spire Shield. I think that means my plan then is use the Flex Potion with a Clockwork Souvenir against the Elites, get a potion back. Against Heart, we have Ancient Potion, Speed Potion, Souvenir Blocks Vulnerable, and then a whole bunch more potions with the Entropic Brew. Extremely, extremely good. We get another Dark Embrace. Ah, another Heavy Blade too. But what about another Entropic Brew? But what about Cauldron, chat? What about Cauldron? So here's what I'm thinking personally. Uh, Dark Embrace, Card Remove, Shrug, Heavy Blade, maybe Burning Pact. The potions are fine. Do we ever take a Sundial? Given that the deck gets smaller and smaller as the fight goes on. I don't think so. We're out of money after all. So we could take Burning Pact. Or we can... We can drink this Entropic Brew, heal five, look at the potion inside, discard it, buy new Entropic Brew. That's another option here. With an actual advantage of five health instantly if we do that. What's the plan after this run? I think we'll probably unwind with some Vampire Survivors. This has been a high-stress stream, to, to tell you the truth. Yeah, let's, let's do this. This is a very unusual move. So we can drink this here in the shop for five health. There's a skill potion inside. I discard it. I buy a new Entropic Brew. We paid 100 gold for five hit points. I'll take it. And look at that. We've even got Nunchaku on nine for these nerds. Get them. P player, what did the Ironclad name his dog? Spot. Weakness. Oh yeah, and we're going to flex potion here too. That's right. They hate it. That means it was good. All right, Dark Embrace, uppercut this guy so that he's weak next turn, and then Kaboomerang. Keep the pressure here, I suppose. 
Could have boomeranged first for Akabeko value. I wasn't really sure on that one. Oof, this is going to hurt a bit. Just defend Flame Barrier or Arma. The Arma only upgrades the Strike, so it's better to go defend Flame Barrier unless I want the 6 damage on the Spear, which I don't think I care about. We've got healing. We'll be fine. Got a lot of healing, actually. Ouch. like this fight's over. As soon as we get the corruption in play, it's all over, but what we can do is double feed, and we should, because that'll be the most hit points gained possible. Seven's too much. Chaku's on 9, that's fine. We have 145 max health, the Heart of Iron returns from earlier. Gremlin Horn will give us a card draw and energy when the heart dies. And one more True Grit Plus, or I could take a Body Slam, but I think we have the damage sorted. So let's just take one more skill. And I think we have pretty much guaranteed success in this heart fight. I'm feeling real confident here, Twitch chat. I'm so excited. Bring it on, Mr. Heart. All right, let's start with drink the Ancient Potion and the Speed Potion. So we're at six dexterity, lots of stuff. And what else we got? Strength Potion, Sneko Oil, Weak Potion, Smoke Bomb. Not great, but certainly more than we needed. I'll be avoiding using these initially because we would like to heal from them with the Toyonathopter if possible. Am I going to play this Immolate? I'd rather just delete Immolate, right? Got plenty of other cards that are going to do more damage. We'll block Vulnerable. We can use the Weak Potion later. A mere 1 by 15. There's our corruption. Good. Okay, so let's drink this. Here we go spot weakness, corruption. Can't play uppercut if I do. I can play the unupgraded uppercut. That's fine. Or I can corruption, spot weakness, have two more energy this turn to play ring and stuff. That's actually a tough choice. Ideally, we want a little bit more strength on the upper end, so I'm really inclined to go Spot Weakness, then Corruption. Let's do that. That way we get to more strength before the fight ends. Take five, which means we can use another potion. Oof. Might be our Sneko Oil. I'll use one of these here. Yeah, let's go Sneko Oil. That's better. Although not by a lot. I always play the slime to get rid of it. I can't do the same for this strike. Twenty-two. All right, next turn looking good. Might as well use this now. Okay, we're a bit behind on damage, but otherwise this is looking perfect. 
Uh, we did unfortunately get rid of armaments, so we can't upgrade our heavy blade, or can we? Panic button now. Panic button now. I can also exhume a spot weakness. Instead of, say, armaments. Although I really do like upgrading some of this stuff. Let's do it. And we get to upgrade uh, Sword Boomerang, too. Alright, cap it out. If I zoomed, then I can't zoom, huh? I didn't think that through enough. Alright, let's just draw four. Well, I did do this to myself. I'm okay taking some damage. Not like I don't have health to spare, right? We're just fine. Play heavy blade, perfected strike, then shuffle. Up this to nine. Well, Twitch chat, that certainly looks like a fight that has come to a conclusion. Let's make sure we properly devour the heart, though. It's not a real win unless we feed, right? GG Twitch chat. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.